Hey, problem solvers. Guys, I'm in a bit of a pickle here, and I really need someone to help me solve this problem. I need problem solvers. Can you help me? So this is what happened. So I wanted to spruce up my house a little bit for the winter months, right? And I wanted to buy some new plants. It's very on brand for me. So I went to the plant store around the corner from my house here. And um, I went to buy pots and seeds so I can grow my own flowers. But the problem is that the pots come in boxes of four. So there's four pots in each box. And then the seeds come three seeds to a box. So now I'm like, okay, well, if I buy one of each, I'm going to have a leftover pot with no seed to put in it. But then if I buy an extra bag of seeds, then I'm going to have leftover seeds with no pot to put them in. So I really want to find a way where I can have an even number of pots in seeds. Can you please help me out with this? Let's take a look. So I drew it out here so we can think about this critically. Here's a box with four flower pots in it and three seeds. So like I just said, if I buy this, then I'm going to have one pot that won't get a seed. So I'm thinking, okay, I have to buy more seeds. So I'll just buy another bag of seeds. Oops, come on. Okay, and now we have six seeds and four pots. Now we have too many seeds and not enough pots. <sighs> All right, it's okay, we can solve this problem. We'll just buy more pots. Now we have eight pots and six seeds. So what happened? Not enough seeds. So let's buy more. We'll just buy another bag of seeds. Okay, now we have nine seeds and eight pots. Not enough pots, let's buy more pots. Now, how many do we have? Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Four times three is 12. We have 12 pots and nine seeds. So what do we need? We need more seeds. Okay. So now we have four bags of three seeds. How many seeds do we have? We have 12 seeds. And how many pots do we have? We have 12 pots. So we figured it out, guys. I need to buy 12 of each. I need to buy three boxes of pots and four boxes of seeds. And then I will have an equal amount. Now, there is a name, a mathematical term for what we just did here. And it's called finding the common multiple. So we just found the common multiple of four and three, and the answer is 12, because 12 is a factor of four, and 12 is a factor of three. That's very exciting. <laughs> so we're going to look a little bit more into this. Um, I'm actually going to switch to my iPad because I think it will be easier for me to um, draw out the rest of what we're going to be talking about. So. Stand by. Hi. Okay. Um, share screen. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> Let me figure this out. Cool. 
right. So do you think that 12 is the only common multiple of three and four? How can we figure that out? How can we figure out if there are more multiples? Or I'm sorry, more common multiples of three and four. Let's list out our multiples. We practiced this the other day. Three, three times two, three times three, four, five, six, One, twenty-four. We can keep going, right? All I'm doing is adding three to every number. I'm counting by threes. I'm listing the multiples of threes. Thirty-three, thirty-six, thirty-nine, forty-two. Five, three, 40, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. Gorgeous. I was questioning myself there for a second, but we got it. So we got the multiples of three. Let's go ahead and I'll pick another color so it's easy to, to, to tell them apart. Let's list out the multiples of four. Okay. Four, eight, 12, 15, 20, I'm sure those commas are in there, 24, 28, 36, 40, 44, 48, all right, we'll stop there. How many common multiples do you have? How many numbers are on both of these lists? Well, we already know that 12 is a common multiple. Beautiful. Do you see any other numbers? I sure do. 24 is also a common multiple of three and four. Do you see any others? And if we kept listing multiples, I bet we would keep finding common multiples. Let's look at another one. All right, let's look at four and six. Four and six. Let's list out the multiples. Let's start with four. We know that we just did it, right? Four, eight times two, eight times three, eight times four. I'm saying eight. You guys know what I'm saying. Four times one, four times two, four times three, four times four. Now four times five, four times six four times seven, four times eight. All right, let's move down to six. I'm actually gonna erase this because I'm gonna move it a little down. Six, six times one, six times two, or six times three. You said 18, you're right. And then six times four, six times five, six times six, so on and so forth. Let's take a look at what the common multiples of four and six are. Do you see them? I see one. Do you see any more? I do. Common multiples. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, just come to Zoom with any questions that you have 
and I promise to make it as clear as I possibly can. All right, let's move on. What if I ask for the common multiples of two and seven? Do I need to list all of this out like I just did with the other numbers? No, I don't. I really don't. I know, remember we practiced this uh, the other day. I know that all multiples of two are even, let me put that in green, are even numbers. Really need to list them out. All I need to do is list the multiples of seven and see how many of them are even numbers. Super simple, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's list the multiples of seven, shall we? Seven times one, seven times two, seven times three, seven times four, seven times five, seven times six, seven times seven, seven times eight, seven times nine, seven times 10. Cool. So just looking at this information, we should be able to find the common multiples of two and seven. What are they? Is seven even? No. 14 even? Yup. What else is even? Remember, even numbers end in zero, two, four, six, or eight. Just like 28, or 42, <laughs> or 56, or 70. And again, if we kept listing multiples of seven, we would find even more and more common multiples. But that's enough for now. Let's move on. Let me see what the next one I was going to ask you about is. Um, wow. All right. That's the last one I had written down to do as a class, which means that I trust you guys enough to move on to your independent activity. Let me show you what that is really quick. Bam. So. In your dojo uh, portfolios, you're gonna find a hundreds chart. This is very similar to what we did yesterday, but it's going to um, be a little more involved. We're gonna really look at all the patterns that we notice. So the first thing I want you to do, again, just like yesterday, is put a square around all the multiples of two. Two, four, six, eight, 10. 12, 14, 16, so on and so on. And then I want you to draw a circle. It might even help to change color. I know you can do that on Dojo. Draw a circle around the multiples of three. And right there, you can already see that we have some common multiples, six, and 12 have both a circle and a square on them. I want you to keep going like this. There are further directions on the sheet in Dojo. And then we're going to really discuss the patterns that we notice. Because remember, that's what mathematicians do. They notice patterns. We're going to talk about the patterns that we notice once we do this. And um, yeah, and we will end today with a much more thorough understanding of common multiples. I don't know if you can tell that I'm excited about it. So I'm going to say goodbye for now, but I will see you on Zoom very shortly. Bye, problem solvers.